So Mandra and Ian have actually started hydroponics where they're growing their own seeds into grass to be able to feed their animals more on a consistent nature. That has largely more to do with the area around here and it being such a steep country. And It's more to do with the fluctuate of the climate here. Um, okay. We get, traditionally here we get a huge flush of feed in spring. Yeah. Um, it's a high rainfall area, so if we don't, you've got you've got to do something with that grass in the spring. Try and make hay out of it. Yeah. Um, if you eat it off too quickly, then it's all gone. But if you make hay out of it, you can at least store that for twelve months or more. Yeah. Um, and then graze around behind it. Then in winter time, you're feeding hay out. So there's the quite so there's quite strong fluctuations in feed quality. Um, if you leave that grass standing too long, the protein levels just drop right out of it. It just goes to rubbish. Yeah. Um, Unlike out in the drier areas of the west of the state where you can leave grass standing and the protein levels actually stay quite high. Yeah. So in order to get a consistency of, of food for the animals and therefore a consistency of meat at the end of the cycle, yeah. um, we looked at a few options and we've, we've built a, um, a hydroponic growing shed. It's a 6 by 12 metre cool room into one of our sheds out on the farm. And within that cool room, there are two modules of aluminium racking, and we'll be producing somewhere around 900 kilograms to a ton of barley wow. grown about that high every day of the year. Wow. Um, that can be turned on. The beauty of that system is it can be turned on and off. Okay, it takes six days to grow to that height, six to seven days. Um, but it, it's not grain feeding where you have to retrain the animal's rumen. Yeah. It's not something that the animal is going to reject. Yeah. It's not going to kill the animal if you overdo it. It's grass. Yeah. And um, it can be turned on and off as the season dictates. But uh, it's, it's another reason why we believe that you're a, a food hero is because of the care factor. And you mm. must care, obviously, enough to be able to want to provide that consistent and thought about this process for your animals for yes. the best yes. possible. Well, I've, I've even hand-fed... Our, yeah. our sprouted grass to the young animals and they yeah. love it. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah. Well, this, this, this echo chamber <laughs> is the uh, propagation shed for our barley production. Um, it's still a, a work unfinished at this stage. But um, basically, uh, this, this room we're in is 12 metres long and 6 metres deep. Um, there's going to be two of these modules of racking in it. Um, each module will hold these trays. These are the trays we use for plant trays from the nursery. The same company makes a solid based one. So we put about 700 grams of barley into this tray, spread it out, and it starts this end, this end of the racking. And then the next day, we load up with another one, put it forward, next day, so on and so forth, until six days later. We've got six days of growth in this tray, which will be, and the six trays high, the, tray, the grass will be about that high after six days of growth. So we're converting 700 grams of barley to around six kilograms of green feed every day. And this module will produce 72 trays of that every day of the week that we wanted to. And with two trays, it'll be 144, two bays, two modules, there'll be 144 trays of food, um, which is about 900 to a tonne. Of green feed every day of the year of the same quality and the advantage of that is without without the grain feeding it's just simply grass we can turn these on and off at a whim yeah. um, it takes six days obviously to then run it out it takes six days to start it but apart from that there's no training of the room to change its, uh, the, the, biology, the um, flora of the room um, we've got the water system split up so they can just run the top three racks if we want to, just with this gate valve here, we can run the whole six, or we can split the system into running the whole shed at one time. So we can we can fine tune it according to the feed requirements out on the farm and how many animals we're trying to we're trying to feed with the, with the higher protein feed. The barley runs out about twenty seven percent protein. Uh, it's very high water content, of course, so we still need a hay backup for roughage. Yeah. Um, but it's a very high protein food produced every single day.
Mm. And that, that's fairly important. It's going to, we're not looking at it as a means of increasing our stocking numbers. What we're doing is increasing the quality of the stock we do produce on the place. We're not trying to turn the thing into a feedlot, we're just trying to um, produce as reliably as we can, mm. sustainably as we can. Yeah. Um, and the lights that you mentioned before, the the air conditioning units. The air conditioning units will be the one per, per module. Yeah. Um, they'll be maintained in this room about 23 degrees centigrade, which is still trying to grow conditions of barley. Okay. The um, motorized lights, they're an ultraviolet yeah. light for growing it. It's the ideal growing light. And the other lights there are the arturos in the back of the room, the simply the work light when we're loading up and when we're um, servicing the unit. Um, these, these particular air conditioners do give a reasonably good air circulation as well. They'll, they'll move a lot of air. Yeah. Um, what I'll probably end up doing is just cutting some air vents in the wall so if you have, you have an air vent, these will, these will uh, take air out of the room. Yeah. Um, and then you'll, they'll be able to draw fresh air in so you, that, that reduces um, mould build-ups. Um, mould is something very important to keep an eye on in this, in this kind of environment. Yeah. Um, we'll be looking at various methods of cleaning the trays. Um, there are methods of treating the water before it goes in that we're really interested in doing it, ionising the water, yeah. just altering the pH of the water slightly. Okay. Um, yeah, and that means that you're not using chemicals all the time to clean yeah. the trays. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but there's some really interesting work being done in those, in those areas, um, just trying to keep it as clean as we can. The, yeah, there are other things we can use this for as well. We're actually looking at producing um, salad sprouts for human consumption oh, in, okay. as, a, as a possibility, but yeah. that'll have to be done later on when the fine cheese is not up and running properly. Just yeah. another business. So you can do another market. story of being a different sort of food hero. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>